Shooting stuff is the core mechanic of many games, whether it's using a gun, a fire beam, a laser blaster, or even paint. Hi, this is Marty and welcome to a new game creator tutorial, where we are going to overview the shooter module as well as create a new weapon from scratch. The shooter module allows to create any kind of weapon and it's all done using two configuration objects, the weapon and the ammo assets. The weapon object defines how the character holds the weapon as well as manages the different locomotion states when aiming, drawing and holstering the gun. The ammo object is a bit more complex and allows to define animations, sound effects, magazine clip sizes, fire rate values and many more. The shooter module comes with some pre-made weapons examples, such as the revolver, a bow, a grenade and a sniper rifle. However, we want to encourage creating your own weapons and not just using the ones we provide. So, for this tutorial, instead of going through all the different configuration settings, which actually would make this video quite boring to be honest, we are going to create a fireball spell casted from a magic wand while learning the ins and outs of this module. Before we even get started, we need to create some triggers and actions that will allow us to easily pull our magic wand, aim and shoot with it. So, we'll need a trigger set to on key down with the E option, which calls a condition that checks whether the player is currently armed or unarmed. If it's unarmed, we'll use the draw weapon action and select which weapon we want to draw. Because we still haven't created the one weapon, we'll use one of the example ones that come with the shooter module and test if everything works as expected. For example, the revolver will do just fine. If the player is currently armed, we will use the holster weapon action. You would normally want to have a dedicated key for aiming with the wand, but to simplify this example, we're going to make the player automatically aim when drawing the wand. This is as easy as using the aim weapon action right after the draw weapon. There are many aiming options you can choose from. In our case, we want the player to shoot where the camera is looking at, so we'll pick the camera direction option. To cast a spell, we're going to use the left mouse button. We'll need a new trigger that detects when the user presses the left mouse button and call an action called Shoot Weapon. There's one last thing we have to do. In order for a character to use a weapon, it needs to have a special component called Character Shooter. Or, if the character is the player, the component is called Player Shooter. That's it! Let's click play and see the result. Excellent! It is important to notice that the shoot action can be called even if we don't have any weapons drawn. This is ok since the shoot weapon action will only work as long as the character has pulled the weapon and it's aiming with it. Otherwise, it will simply ignore the shoot instruction. Now it's time to get into the good stuff. Let's right click on the project panel and select Create Game Creator Shooter Weapon. Let's do the same exact thing, but this time we'll create an ammo asset. You can create and move these assets wherever makes sense in the organization of your project. We're using this location as we already have some animations, particle and sound effects. All these assets can be downloaded for free following the link in the description. Let's start with the weapon asset. As you can see, the asset already gives you a couple of hints of what it's missing. We'll ignore this for now as we're going to go over the settings from top to bottom. Let's open the general tab. This section is pretty much self-explanatory. We need to drag the ammo asset to the default ammo field. This allows us to equip a weapon without having to specify its ammunition. Then, we have the state ease and state aiming. These two sections are pretty much identical. The first one allows to change the stance of the character when drawing the weapon, and the second one does the same but while aiming with it. 
The stances are defined using Game Creator's Character State objects. If you're not familiar with this concept, we recommend you check out the link that appears on screen as well as under the description. For the At Ease state, we want to have the default locomotion that comes with Game Creator. We can create an empty locomotion state and leave it as it is. A locomotion state also allows to play an animation clip when entering and exiting this state. This is perfect, since we can use it to play animations for pulling the wand when entering the state and holster it when exiting it. We can use the avatar mask to filter the body parts affected by the animation, allowing us to play the draw and holster animations while walking, running or even jumping. For the aiming section, we're going to do the same, but instead of using the locomotion state, we're going to use a simple state. A simple state allows us to play a single animation clip in a loop, which is exactly what we want when the character aims with its wand. We can use the previous avatar mask to only play the aiming pose on the upper body. Before we go into play mode, there's one last thing we have to configure, the 3D model. A 3D model is required, even if the weapon you're going to shoot is invisible. This is so because a 3D model prefab requires a special component called Muzzle Component, which tells the system the direction and the origin of the shot. Let's make a quick one using a Unity Cube. You should definitely use a proper 3D model, but this is going to do the trick for now. We will make a prefab out of it and open it in the prefab mode. We'll create an empty game object and add the muzzle component and place it at the tip of the wand. Let's go back to the wand asset and drag and drop the prefab onto the 3D model field. All right. Before we go into play mode, let's backtrack to the trigger that draws the weapon and change the revolver to our new wand weapon. Perfect, now we're ready. So, as soon as we press the E key, the player pulls the wand and… uh oh. Okay, we see a couple of problems here. First, the wand is at the origin of the wrist. Secondly, the entire body looks like it's slightly rotated. Do not worry. All changes made on the weapon and ammo assets are kept even if they are edited in play mode. We can switch to the scene view and see the object from the eagle perspective in orthographic view mode. This will help us align the body rotation with the direction of the right arm. To correct the rotation of the character, we can simply go to the state aiming section and play with the lower body rotation field. And yeah, I think that looks quite well. Let's fix now the wand position. We can select it on the hierarchy panel and via trial and error, we find a position that looks good. Once you've found a position on rotation that suits, copy them onto the prefab position and prefab rotation values. Ok, I think it is starting to look like something. Now of course, we can't shoot anything since the ammo asset hasn't been configured yet. So next stop, Fireball. The ammo asset is divided into multiple sections that we're going to go over from top to bottom. The general section allows to configure common settings, such as at which rate the weapon fires and how many bullets can fit inside the magazine. It doesn't make sense to have the concept of bullets in our magic wand, so we'll change this into infinite ammo. 
Auto Reload means that it will automatically try to reload the weapon if there are no bullets left in the magazine. The aiming section deals how the user visualizes the point where the weapon will fire at. You can choose between different aiming modes, such as visualizing the trajectory or having a crosshair overlay. I think having a crosshair suits best. We have already created a very simple custom crosshair called Crosshair Wand. Creating custom crosshairs is a bit out of the scope of this tutorial, but you can learn how to do it by following the link down in the description. The Focus Time property defines how long does the character have to stay still in order to achieve maximum precision. The Charging section deals with weapons that can be charged up in order to shoot. For our magic wand, we don't want any charging, so we'll leave this at Disable Charge. However, if you want to create something like a blaster gun that requires the character to charge up the shot before shooting, this is the place. The shooting section is possibly the most complex one. The shooting type field determines how the shot will be done, and it defines what properties are shown below. At the time of this tutorial, you can choose between these ones. Raycast type, which immediately hits the target. Raycast all works the same way as Raycast, but it doesn't stop after the first obstacle. This is very useful for guns such as sniper rifles that can hit multiple enemies with a single bullet. Trajectory cast is very similar to Raycast 2, but the shot takes into account the pitch of the gun and the gravity. This allows the shot to follow a trajectory. Projectile allows to instantiate a physical bullet. This bullet gets pushed forward automatically but needs to handle collision detection by itself. For our magic wand, we'll use the Raycast method. We want to achieve something like this, which requires a spark emitted from the tip of the weapon, a flashy particle effect at the contact point of the shot, and a nice fire trail between the two. To do this, we can make use of these two prefabs I've already made and place them onto the prefab muzzle flash and prefab impact effect fields. These prefabs, as you can see, have nothing but a fancy particle effect that bursts once and stops. The layer mask field allows the weapon to filter which objects will be affected by the shot. Push force allows to apply force to the impacted object. The Use Shooting Trail allows to add a trail renderer that retracts over time when shooting a bullet. For our Fireball spell, we want to change the duration, material, width and texture more properties in order to show a fire trail. We've already created an unlit material that uses an additive shader. The Recoil property allows to decrease the amount of precision after each consecutive shot. The delay property allows to add a delay between the instant when the animation and sound effects starts and the actual shot is taken. This is especially useful for weapons such as the one we're doing, where the character needs to start swinging the wand before actually casting the spell. We've played with different values and found that a delay of 0.25 seconds is the sweet spot. The min spread and max spread values define the limits of the precision. When a character moves, jumps or shoots, its precision is lowered and takes a few seconds before he can correctly aim again. These values define how much each shot will deviate from the desired trajectory when aiming with full precision and the lowest precision possible. The ammo model section is for aesthetic purposes only and allows to show or hide an object that's visible when the character has a loaded weapon. This doesn't make sense for our wand, but it does for weapons like bows, where the arrow, which would be the ammo model object, is visible when the bow is loaded. The audio section allows to select different sound effects for different situations. Similarly, the animation section allows to play an animation on the character on various situations. For example, we want the player to swing its wand when casting a fireball spell. To do that, we simply drag and drop the animation clip of the character moving the wand and limit the animation to the upper body with an avatar mask. That's all! Let's see how this plays out! As we can see, as soon as we hit the E key on our keyboard, the character pulls the wand and we can start shooting at these boxes. Notice how they are pushed backwards. 
Now watch this. By just changing the push force value for a negative one, the sound and the particle effects, we can turn this Expelliarmus into an actual one. Now let's see these actions list variables at the, at the top of the ammo asset. These make it possible to interact with scene objects. For example, we can add a camera shake effect when we shoot with our wand as well as destroy the object impacted. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked this video and learned something. The Shooter module has been one of the most highly requested modules for the past two years and we can't wait to see what you create with it. Remember you can download it from the Unity Assets Store. See you soon and happy game making!